Okay, let's learn to draw Renaissance architecture starting from zero. So with zero previous experience in drawing or architecture. So you basically don't need to know anything about architecture. You can start just like that and you will get a sketch on Renaissance architecture and understand a bit of the theory. But ideally you do have a bit of architecture education just for the context, for the fact that you will understand basically the um how the um like importance of the renaissance re uh, relates to the other parts of the architecture phenomenon right so the tools you need is a 2b pencil and um, just a simple paper and i recommend you also take notes for the lecture part of this presentation right let's go so uh again um i'd like to dedicate this to one of my personal heroes uh, Jacopo Barotti da Vignola, who's uh, basically a perspectivist that started off uh, as a perspectivist and ended up being a mannerist architect. So, architecture history, just a bit of context, okay? So, yeah, all sorts of buildings. How does the Renaissance um, uh, uh, fill into, into this context? And basically, why should you learn this? Because obviously sketching details is uh, something that's going to help you, okay? So these buildings are sufficiently detailed for you to understand them and uh, basically decompose them visually and then recompose them on your page. Okay, you will get a basic visual culture. Uh, it's basic because, of course, these are complex topics. But again, sketching them, understanding how to uh, literally do the the building, to draw the building, that is, you know, a good starting point for your studies. And uh, obviously this is going to give you a good context for architecture. So the history of architecture, um, let's see. So yeah, architecture um, as a phenomenon around the world started uh, obviously from stuff that wouldn't resist the test of time so uh regardless we could say that the neolithic era is the starting point for architecture again religious architecture okay mostly religious architecture and uh yeah there's um several stages okay um again architecture is a symbol of power it's a symbol of the divine Right, the contrast between the divine and the, you know, day-to-day -day normal person. But when the Renaissance came along, something happened, something changed, right? And um, the focus shifted from uh, the divine, from just the you know, expression of power, to um, basically the, uh, the focus on the individual and on the humanistic ideals but we will talk about that in a couple of minutes right so early renaissance just a couple of examples saint andrea mantua um yeah just uh info i have to be honest this is information off wikipedia so it's stuff that you could find for yourself not the most important thing and the patsy chapel um again uh examples of good um, early Renaissance architecture. Obviously the mature and late Renaissance, the Florence Dome, Santa Maria Novella, the principles were extremely um, detailed and pushing the boundaries, right? You could say, you know, like that dome evolved into this dome and so on. So let's talk about a bit of conceptual theory. So it's called the Renaissance, it should be with a capital R, because the composition principles, again, they go back to the theory that, uh, you know, you'd have with the capital, with the base, the column, and the capital itself, right? And that principle stands the test of time until today, which is very interesting. It's going to help you design your work. The next step is constructed perspective. Okay, so um, because of the invention of perspective, this facilitated the focus on um, on the human scale. Uh, by the way, I have a uh, article written for this um, 
for this video so that's going to basically detail things a bit more we're just looking for the um, general outline and the general basically principles that uh, you know if you learn you'll be able to draw this uh, again number three the conceptual theory uh, the third principle would be a focus on vertical and horizontal registers right so um, although it's still an analytical architecture, it's got very good geometry. It's really clear the vertical and the horizontal basically order space, which is again a principle that right, stays with us until today. So um, yeah, I recommend you start with thumbnails for sketching this. These are random thumbnails for line drawing exercises. These are a couple of drawings my students did. So you can see that you can take things really far okay you just need to uh, basically focus and uh, follow along and uh, you will be fine although these are intimidating subjects we will make them work so how can we start to draw something like this and assure that you will get good results we we'll start with the four-step formula right so fill the page with construction lines so uh, again, one perspective point on the page, the other one far off the page. Always construct the back lines, construct the volumes, and the pencil zone weight is going to be used as uh, construction lines. Then thicken the contour lines. Uh, obviously you'll see this applied on a uh, classical building, on a Renaissance building. Uh, thicken the visible lines to get that clarity. Again, it's just line drawing, exaggerate the thickness, get your drawing ready for hatching. Uh, you can obviously feel free to exaggerate the foreground to get more spatial depth. For hatching, again, what do we hatch? Shadows. So basically, we are going to hatch the shadowed faces and the cast shadows for the, uh, the volume and the materials. And we are going to use the... Uh, the hatching to show different types of materials again you're going to use smudged hatching to fill the page and get that clarity uh, get darker gradients towards the foreground you can exaggerate the contrast as well just to get clarity clarity is very important contrast is very important so hatch materials and shadows um, gradients towards the foreground and exaggerate the contrast these are things that are reoccurring you need to kind of feel them okay so Feel free to rewatch the videos, um, all videos, I think, uh, from this uh, channel. You know, we could um, obviously see these principles applied. Again, okay, uh, the last thing would be rethickening the lines, to rethicken the lines to get clarity again, um, to get crispness to your graphics, and uh, <laughs> understand the process from head to start, right? So you got the thumbnail, you got construction lines from the pencils and weight, you got contour lines. Then we've got a bit of hatching for the shadows, not that much materiality because uh, we are focusing on this analytical architecture. And then you are going to rethicken the lines after hatching. Okay, this is the Palazzo Chieri Cutti. So let's go for drawing, fast forward, of a Renaissance masterpiece, maybe Ospendale degli Innocenti. Okay, let's go, go, go.
Okay, we finished that. Now let's go for a short crit so you can see uh, how your colleagues fare with uh, this type of work. Okay, although it's complicated because it's all new, it is um, okay what you need to get the next level. So these are the final uh, images, final drawings for Renaissance. Let's get started. So the Ospendali Deli in Ascenti, um, it's got a massive perspective mistake. Right, it needs to have like a horizon line somewhere here. And obviously these lines converge like so. Right? Something like that. You can make them even more dynamic if you wish. The thing is, the, uh, the these are more dynamic. Right there, if they're more dynamic, then this needs to be a bit more dynamic as well. And this as well. Okay. Right. Okay, good. Yeah, this needs a bit more detailing. This is good, but again, it's got a perspective mistake. Okay, so the perspective point is here, you see? Uh, one moment. It needs to have this horizon line like lower. Perspective point is here. This should be like a bit more out. And for, for something like this, then it's, it's a bit more deformed. I don't know if you can tell needs to be a bit more deformed. Okay, the, uh, the party chapel, yeah, the Farnese, yeah, really good, really good. This is good. The Tempieto is good. The Dome of Florence, yeah, not bad, not bad. It's got like, it's got, it got like this effect of uh, a lot of stuff overlapping, you know, it's, it could be good. Like a good final image. It doesn't really make sense though, but uh, you know, because you've got this like um, campanile here, like tower. You've got like this horizontal, and then the dome starts. So, in theory, it would be further to the right hand side. Patsy Chapel, yeah, not bad. Needs shadows, yeah, good. Next, yeah, good. Aerial view of the Florence Dome. Ospendali in the center looks better. Patsy Chapel looks really good. This is how it looks, it's supposed to look. Farnese, yeah, good, good, yeah. Next, yeah, a bit um, careful with the perspectives because there's perspectives mistakes here as well, right? And um, yeah, this looks a bit too deformed. Right, it needs to um, basically flatter here on the ground because you know the horizon line kind of needs to be at the level of yeah people. Okay, so you can't really have if you have the horizon line here, like the person is this tall, it's like a you know you can't uh, can't look right. This is good. Okay, this is really good. Um, horizon line level. Okay, graphic wise, yeah, it's kind of struggling here. But yeah, good amount of detailing and good try. There's a perspective mistake here. Right, we need to test that and uh, correct it. You know, it's hard to add this huge amount of information. Okay, this is good. Okay, good, good detailing. You see like the graphics come from the line drawing. And obviously, if you construct these perspectives, it's going to take each, it's going to take you probably yeah, four hours or something, five hours for each drawing. So. Uh, it's really not what we're aiming for here. We're aiming for you sketching these, understanding them. I think this needs to have like a taller something here. Have a bit more, more bulk. And don't forget about the cast shadows for the, uh, or the back part here. Okay, good, next. Good, interesting, you can color, but uh, you don't want it to distract attention from, um, right? Right, from everything else. You can have buildings around it, around the dome. It should be short on this side, I think. Yeah, really good. Ospendale, good. More stairs. 
yeah, decent, decent amount of uh, detailing and line drawing. Uh, <laughs> this looks kind of scared. Oh, careful not to uh, create these optical illusions. I think it looks, <laughs> looks weird as well. <laughs> this is funny, right? Yeah, this is good. Jospendal is good, the part of Farnese is good. Tempieto is good. Party Chapel needs that change. Obviously a good cast shadow here. I think this is actually taller. Entrance, the door. Yeah, good, good. Yeah, this kind of needs a bit more detailing, you know, come on, it's like a, the base of uh, it's an octagon, octagon base, octagon dome, right? So this needs to have more faces, okay, like the element on top, yeah, it's a bit more here. Yeah, not bad, graphics wise we're good, but we still have a couple of perspective mistakes. Right, these are the hardest to combat. Right, tackle. This is good. Bit of a floor here. These are too open, they need to be flatter compared to the horizon line. Right, this is good. Again. Yeah, this needs to, it looks like a um, lemon squeezer, right? It needs to kind of have that, that thing to it. Okay. Right. Yeah, not bad, not bad. Kind of detailed, yeah, good, good. Yeah. A couple of perspective and detailing mistakes here and there. Wouldn't hurt to get a triangle and uh, thicken these edges a bit edges a bit more. Okay. Yeah, good. This is good. Yeah, it needs ellipses here, here, here. Yeah, this is good. It's like a mouse level perspective. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, this isn't bad. You have a decent amount of detailing. Careful with this hatching. This is just filler hatching. Right, you could actually benefit from throwing more detailing there, right? Instead of adding uh, extra hatching. Yeah, good, good. Let's make people like, yeah, groups, yeah. Kind of a lot of empty space, but not bad. It needs a, it needs a bit more line drawing. Yeah, so this is how they look from a distance. You see like the detailing like really catches your eyes, right? It's, it looks uh, really good. Obviously, we need to zoom in to see all those perspective mistakes and correct them, but the overall effect is really good. Uh, yeah, this is kind of slacking, you know. The handwriting is really good. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it needs to be architectural, right? So when you, every time you're drawing something, you're writing something, make sure you're writing it in an architectural way. A, B, right, C, right? Yeah, this is a missing element here. Not bad, but it's lacking uh, information. Okay. Yeah, good. It needs a bit more detailing. Yeah, kind of dark. And these are too small, they need to be larger. Yeah. Good, but again, a beginner drawing, it needs a bit more information. Like, uh, look, uh, things that like show that you're a beginner. Need to have the window here, like divided, put on all the elements, put on the front element here. Right, and you create a cast shadow on top, and then you, you kind of get that effect of a, um, of a window, right? Again, beginner. Careful with these ellipses. If they go around on a curve, they get flatter. I think they're, they're more spaced out. Because if they're too close together, then uh, you know, like the whole dome doesn't uh, hold. Okay, good, good attempt. There are perspective mistakes here. No, 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 no. Leave that. 
There are perspective mistakes here. Okay, good. Yeah. And we are done. Right, so careful with the perspective mistakes, the proportions. And yeah, just uh, try to, to, to add as much detailing, line drawing detailing as possible. The front dome needs uh, an uh, octagonal base for that uh, dome, right? Careful of how these ellipses go around, right? The cylinder of a dome, they get flatter as they move around. You can look for the the amount of detailing that creates that effect of a um, juicy drawing, like right? creatively juicy drawing with a lot of stuff on it, right? Uh, just ignore filler stuff like hatching and so. Don't, don't leave too much bank spaces. And, you know, the graphics should look good because of the, uh, you know, white on the page, which is, uh, you know, where, where, you've, uh, where the light hits and uh, where there's no line drawing okay you can see that they look really impressive from a distance careful with cliches they're, they're kind of toxic and with these ellipses you know construct them okay like so now for instance here yeah it's these diagonals so i'm doing this by freehand you can go and uh, use a ruler Right, next, okay. And the thing is you can't really fake where you are with drawing. Um, you will learn these monuments, they're really good. But um, yeah, at the end of the day, you know, you really need to improve on your constructed perspective, on your technical drawing, so you understand that logical part. So your mind can really grasp these volumes, okay? And then obviously it's going to really improve, like get like a, uh, like a really good, like, the greater whole is larger than the sum of the parts, right? Technical drawing with this, you know, they're really going to create a good drawing style for you. Okay, next. Okay, so let's get into uh, some crazy stuff. Um, there's going to be obviously a uh, link between the contemporary style of architecture and the classical or the Renaissance, okay? So you see this building, quite, quite popular um, over here in, uh, in Bucharest, where I live at the moment. It's a mix of uh, obviously classical and contemporary. And obviously uh, contemporary is classical without the decoration from a, um, you know, superficial uh, you know, standpoint. So let's talk about Le Corbusier because uh, you can't have contemporary or modern without Le Corbusier. This is the man himself. These are some of the buildings he did. So uh, Le Corbusier invented a new style of architecture, modern architecture, okay? And he created these five principles. The Pilates, the roof terrace, the free facade, the ribbon window, and the round plan, okay? These are very, very good, but, um, you know, they didn't appear from, you know, just his uh, imagination. And these were um, principles that were kind of copied from the classical architecture, and I could say from Renaissance, because he actually had a sixth principle, which was about not um, doing the cornice, right? Which is the top, um, the top, um, you could say, connection between the uh, walls of the building and the roof, okay? So not having that would create the distinctive look of modernism and uh, obviously he scrapped principle number six. He applied it nonetheless, but he scrapped it because it would uh, show a clear connection from modernist architecture to Renaissance and to the classical, okay? So uh, yeah, is modern architecture a ripoff of the Renaissance architecture? That's a good question. You have the Palazzo Chiaricati, which is a mannerist building. And uh, at the end of the day, it's just a volume sitting on a void, right? It's a cantilever volume sitting on a void. And, uh, and this is a uh, image I, I got of, again, a simple Google search. And you can see that it's kind of the same thing. It, it might be, you know, the Palazzo Chiaricati is a straight line. The, uh, the building here, the house here is a uh, L-shaped plan, but you can see the same principle of a volume, the one on the right, sitting, you know, around a void, right? This has got a colonnade, this has just got a cantilever. So is modern architecture a ripoff of Renaissance architecture? Could be. It's a good way of seeing things and of connecting ideas to get new insight. 
But regardless, architecture composition is still the same. So again, we are talking a bit more about theory now, just to get um, a bit of a better understanding, okay, for um, for the phenomenon of Renaissance architecture. So uh, again, Fimitas, Utilitas, and Venustas. Uh, Fimitas, the structure, again, stands the test of time to try to imply structure in all of your Renaissance sketches. So again, small windows, those colonnades, right, the load-bearing walls, etc. Utilitas, utility, again, uh, the, the colonnades, what's happening behind the facades. It's obviously a, um, I wouldn't call it a primitive, but a linear way of expressing uh, utility, okay, in this case. Okay, and the Venustas, the, the beautiful part of the Renaissance, the visual language, the specific type of, um, basically, geometry. Let's get back to drawing. Um, let's see how um, we can link Renaissance sketching to other areas of drawing. So uh, maybe architecture composition. So again, composition is just going to help you understand um, a link between these two types of drawing, okay? You'll feel it as you start drawing. Okay, so all these weird uh, compositions, they do help you understand, okay? Constructive perspective is good as well because obviously you do want to get the correct, the 100% correct version of the uh, right sketch. You can't get that without constructing the perspective. So basically constructing the main volume and then uh, building up on that, okay? And uh, obviously you'll get the plans off of, again, Google image search, you convert it to scale, and then you're good to go for the, for constructing large volume and then uh, doing everything else. Okay, and uh, obviously contemporary sketching, these are just random sketches with entourage, just random topics, right? All these things, they add up, okay? So if you want to take your Renaissance sketching to the next level, you can link them to contemporary sketching. So quick recap, uh, the four-step formula, the conceptual theory, the sixth principle of architecture, of modern architecture, and the links to the types of drawing. So the four-step formula, again, fill the page with construction lines, thicken the contour lines, hatch shadows of materiality, and re-thicken the drawing after. Okay, so you can see from left to right, Construction lines, contour lines, hatching, rethickening. This is really going to work to get you good, uh, uh, good results with drawing. Conceptual theory again, reinterpretation of the classical orders, right? So that's why it's Renaissance. Constructive perspective with the focus on human scale and the horizontal and vertical re uh, registers, which give order and geometry to this type of architecture. The sixth principle, the connection, the theory that modern architecture is just a ripoff of Renaissance architecture, could work, could give you a creative edge if you're designing, and obviously the links to other types of drawings, okay, construction, uh, constructive perspective, contemporary sketches, architecture composition, it all works together, okay? So stop being lazy or afraid of this stuff. Uh, I hope you took notes. Now you've got all the tools to go and make it happen. And um, obviously mix this skill set with other abilities and you will get really good results with uh, sketching, with building up a portfolio, with understanding this type of architecture. So go take massive action. Watch the video again if you have to. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments box below and uh, go make it happen for yourself. Talk to you soon. Take care. Draw nicely.